I'm Harrison Keeley. Here's what you need to know today. First, it may have been in the 70s yesterday, but Chattanooga is now under a winter storm watch. The National Weather Service says we're likely to see freezing rain that will turn into sleet and then snow this afternoon. Accumulations are expected to be low, but driving conditions could get dangerous. In the meantime, Tennessee may give school districts a waiver when it comes to scheduling snow makeup days this summer. The Education Commissioner says the state will decide on lifting the requirements of teaching 180 days because of the winter storms. The decisions will be made on a case-by-case -case basis for schools that request it. A woman accused of murdering her boyfriend has been found not guilty. A jury acquitted Deborah Elaine Wilkins Wednesday. Wilkins killed William Robert Packer last June in Chattooga County. She told investigators that Packer planned to kill three acquaintances and that he also planned to kill her because she knew his plan. She shot him five times in his house as he searched for his gun. She originally told police she didn't do it but confessed five days later. Amazon is adding 400 full-time jobs in Chattanooga. The company says it's hiring more people at its local distribution center to meet growing demand. The positions will pick, pack, and ship customer orders. Pay is up to $11.75 an hour. A new $20 million development plans to tie into the Tennessee Riverwalk near St. Elmo. Collier Construction plans to develop a neighborhood of nearly 50 homes and townhouses on land behind the Southern Saddlery Company building. If the project is approved by the City Council in April, construction could start by September. Hamilton County Commissioners have approved a new Walmart store for Middle Valley. The project has been strongly opposed by residents who live near the proposed site on Thrasher Pike. Commissioner Marty Haynes voted against the development, but the commission ruled 5-4 to four in support of the store. The neighborhood market is expected to bring 95 jobs. It's unclear when construction will start. Two women died in a head-on collision on Hicks and Pike Wednesday morning. The accident happened around 6.30 near the Valley Brook Golf and Country Club. Police identified the victims as 36-year-old Julie Harefield and 63-year-old Judy Jeffers. Officials say the 18-month-old boy shot in the head by his 3-year-old brother is recovering. The shooting happened Tuesday in Hillsboro. The toddler is being treated at Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville. Coffee County Sheriff Steve Graves says it's unknown whether anyone will be charged in the case. A Georgia man has pleaded guilty to DUI in a crash that killed his wife on their wedding day. Investigators say 29-year-old Ryan Quinton was driving drunk in December 2013 when he lost control in Cherokee County. His wife, 25-year-old Kaylee Sean Dobson, was killed. Quinton has been sentenced to 15 years in prison. Red Bank Police Officer Mark Kaler has been charged for his role in the violent arrest of a Hispanic man. Kaler faces charges of aggravated assault, reckless endangerment, and official misconduct. He resigned from the police department Tuesday. Video from a traffic stop in April shows Kaler repeatedly punching a man. Initially, the police department commended Kaler and cleared him of wrongdoing. Kaler is expected to appear in court next week. He plans to fight the charges and hopes to return to the force. If convicted, he could face up to 15 years in prison. The Cleveland Police Department now has its third chief in just four days. City Manager Janice Castile has appointed Captain Mark Gibson as interim police chief. The change comes after a state agency told Castile that she wasn't allowed to serve as chief. Meanwhile, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation is now involved in the case of Cleveland Police Officer Jeff Griggs. Griggs has been arrested twice since he discovered his wife allegedly kissing police chief Dennis Maddox in a parked car. Griggs will appear in court March 17th. The police chief in Graysville, Tennessee has been fired again. Officials won't say why Eric Redden was terminated, but they say it has nothing to do with the previous charges against him. Redden became chief in 2012, but last summer he was indicted by the TBI on seven counts of misconduct and three counts of theft. The charges came after nearly $4,000 went missing following a drug bust. Redden was laid off but was reinstated a few weeks later. A Bradley County woman who ran back into her burning house to save her pets has died. 88-year-old Anna Matthews was cooking in her home Friday when a fire broke out. She ran outside and called 911, then she went back inside. She was taken to a burn unit in Marietta, Georgia and died Wednesday morning. Two cats died in the fire, but a cat and a dog were saved. Turning to weather, the high today will be near 34 degrees. Tonight's low will be around 21. 
That's it for today's news. Thanks for being with us. You can find more on these stories and breaking news all day long at timesfreepress.com.